Hi, I'm Norm Abram. Welcome to the New Yankee Workshop. But today we're going to build this handsome redwood arbor. We found dozens of examples of these attractive garden features on the beautiful island of Nantucket. And we'll take you there and show you what we found next, right here on the New Yankee Workshop. The New Yankee Workshop features the craftsmanship of Norm Abram. Some of the oldest seaside cottages on the East Coast can be found right here in Sconset, a tiny little village on the island of Nantucket. Now among all these old cottages, it seems that every other one has an arbor like this one. This one has a nice arched top, this fence that comes into it with a gate. But I really like the fact that these roses are climbing up over the top of it. Now here's another one that's about the same in size, but they've done a different detail with the lattice. The verticals are turned on edge. Nearby, there's another one. It actually completes the corner where the fence comes around. It has a nice vine growing over the top of it and a very interesting gate with pickets on both sides. Ah, oh, look at this. This arbor actually forms the entrance to this cottage. It's a beautiful piece of woodwork. Here on the side of the Union Chapel is an arbor made of nothing but privet hedge. How would you like to trim that? If you like good food, here's an arbor you'll want to see at the Chanticleer restaurant. Too bad they're closed today. One of the most unusual arbors in the village is this one. You don't walk through it, you walk to it. And when you get here, you can sit down and serve tea if you like. And I really like this diamond-shaped lattice pattern. I'm sure glad that we had time to visit the arbors of Sconset. What inspiration from looking at all those arbors in Sconset. And after looking at those, this is what I came up with a destination arbor. I suppose you could build it without the seat and just use it as a pass-through, but we like the idea of a seat, a place to sit down. Now it's about four feet wide with a nice two-foot radius arch. This runs across the top of the arch and lattice on the side so that we can let a vine climb up over it. Now if you'd like to add one of these to your landscape, a measured drawing is available with a materials list. And you'll hear more about that before the program ends. Now, before we get started today, I also want to talk about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your power tools. Knowing how to use your power tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And remember this, there is no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses. Now, the most difficult part of this project and time-consuming part is to build those nice arches. There's a couple different ways it could be done. I could have cut thin strips of wood and bent them around a form, all glued up together. The other way is this one, which is segments of the arc. And there's actually two sections, one on this side and another group of segments on the other side. They're half-lapped. Here's the joint here, another one here, here, here. So when it's all glued together, it becomes a very strong unit and it approximates the arch that we want to have. We'll cut it out later. That one I glued up last night. We have one more to make. We start with two by eight redwood. My radial arm saw has been turned to 18 degrees and we'll start to cut those segments. Now I need a top measurement, long point to long point, of 19 and a quarter inches. I use my bevel gauge, which is set at 18 degrees, to give me a guideline. And I'll cut seven pieces like this. Now I'm starting with the top center piece of the arch. You could call it the keystone. And I simply roll on a nice even coat of this one part waterproof glue. Making sure to get every bit covered. 
Now you'll notice that there's a center line right in the middle of the piece. And what I want to do is with glue applied to the piece that's going to overlay, align the center line with the saw cut. And then over here there's a center line on, the, on this piece which has to align with the saw cut of the keystone. Once those are lined up, we'll nail it in place. Now I just add another piece for the other side on the keystone. And I'm being sure that these nails will be out of the way of the cutting that will take place later. Helps hold everything together while I put on the clamps. Well, now I just continue the assembly, making sure that these joints are as tight as possible. And I'll tell you, this project eats up a lot of clamps. You'll note I'm not using any backer blocks on my clamps, and that's because where the clamps are, most of the wood will be removed. And if it does leave a little mark where it's remaining, I'll just sand it off. With the seven identical pieces glued and clamped together, I can now work on the ends. On the side with three segments, I'm adding this piece with an angle cut on one end and a square cut on the other, 21 inches long. Now this extra length is necessary so that I can form tenons on the arch that will fit into the top of the post. The corresponding piece on the back side of the arch where there are four equal segments is a little bit shorter, 13 inches. All right, now here are the two corresponding pieces on the other end of the arch blank. We'll clamp it up and set it aside to dry. Now I'll show you how to cut the arch out of the blank. First, I have this template that I made from quarter inch plywood. I cut it out on my band saw. You could also use a jigsaw. Then I smooth the edge with a sander and I've attached it to the blank with a couple screws. Now that template will be used with my router, which is set up with this collar, which will ride against the edge of the template, and a half inch straight cutting bit. Now I have to cut all the way through, so I'll only take about a quarter of an inch at each pass. I'm also going to wear a dust mask because Redwood makes pretty fine dust. And of course, hearing protection for the router. Well, that's the maximum amount of depth that I can cut from this side. So I'll clean it up, flip it over, and do exactly the same thing. And with that, we have the beginnings of our arch. The next step is to drill a series of holes, one inch in diameter, using a Forstner bit, which is set to go to a depth of one inch. These holes are the first step in making some mortises, which will receive the pieces that connect the two arches together. To square up the holes of the mortise, I'm using a template. There's a hole in the middle with a couple blocks which sit on the top of the arch. I just center it by eye and use my router with the same setup as before to clean it out. Now with the tenons all laid out at the bottom of the arch, I'm ready to cut it. 
The first step is along this line with the saw set at a depth of three quarters of an inch. Make the shoulder cut across the thickness of the arch. I'm just using my back saw. And finally, to make the cheek cut, I'm going to return to my circular saw. And now I'll just round the corners a little bit with my wood rasp. Once the arch is sanded smooth, I can ease the corners using a quarter inch rounding over bit. The final milling step on the arch is really purely decorative. I've chamfered the edges using a chamfering bit in my router. And you'll notice that I stopped about three and a half inches from the end. Now here in the bench vise, I've clamped in one of the four corner posts. It's a three inch by five inch post. And at the top of each post, I need a mortise to receive the tenons from the arch. So I've made another jig with a hole in the middle and side cleats to position it properly. I'll hold it in place with one screw and I'll remove the material using the same router setup I used earlier. The back posts also need a mortise for the tenons that support the backrest. And I'll start out making that mortise by roughing it out over at the drill press, which is still equipped with a one inch horseman bit. Good. The quarter inch roundover bit is used here to ease these corners. Now for the lattice panels. There's an inner frame and an outer frame, and the lattice is like the ham in a sandwich. First thing I want to do is make one of the frames. I'm going to reinforce the joints with biscuits and glue. These slots will receive the beechwood biscuits. Now this little device comes in real handy for distributing the glue in the biscuit slots. And of course I'm still using that waterproof glue. Now we just bring them together and apply a little bit of clamp pressure. While the frame is drying in the clamps, we can start to apply the lattice. I've laid out a 60 degree triangle, which will be the lattice pattern. And before I get started, I want to temporarily clamp this cleat on because the lattice does not want to run into this area. I need that to attach it to the post. Now here's a piece of lattice right here. 60 degree cut at the bottom, 30 degree cut at the top. I use my miter box to cut the 30 degree angles and my radial arm for the 60 degree. A little bit of glue and I'll attach it in place using some one inch brads. Now it's just a matter of using this spacer to lay out for the rest of the lattice.
Now this is the last piece that goes on this run in this direction. It's really just a filler piece. Now I'll start from the center again, overlaying this lattice in exactly the same way. Now I have switched the nails in my brad nail to three quarter inch nails, so they won't go all the way through. Okay, next I have to make another frame for the other side of the sandwich. Well, I found that it's a little bit easier to apply the glue to the lattice where it's going to meet the other frame instead of the other way around. Now I'll just flip the whole thing over and get it aligned. Good. Well, we got a lot done today. I think we'll be able to easily finish it tomorrow. Before I left the shop last night, I attached one of the lattice panels to the post. And I'll show you how that's done. The first thing that I want to do is cut a series of biscuit slots in the edge of the frame about every eight inches. Next, I attach this one inch cleat to the post with some screws. Now with my accessory fence removed, I'm simply placing the biscuit joiner against the cleat and making the corresponding slots. Now there are a lot of biscuit slots, but this is the only thing that holds the post to the panels. In each slot goes glue and a number 20 biscuit. And now we just drop it in place. You know, it's remarkable how strong of a joint you can get with this system of biscuits. Well, once again, it seems like you have to use a lot of clamps for this project. On the top of each panel is a little cap. It has a bevel top for looks, but also for function so the water will run away. It's just made from a 2 by 4 that I run through the table saw, which has the blade tilted to a 10 degree angle. The cap just gets centered on the panel and attached with some eight penny finish nails. You may recall that this mortise is for the backrest. I need to put a tenon on the back rail, so I've set up my table saw to make the shoulder cuts first. Now a height adjustment for the top and bottom shoulders. Now this is the bottom rail of the backrest and it requires a special wedge shaped cutout and I make that with my back saw.
he can see how that notch wraps around the post. And it also gives the backrest a 10 degree slant. Glue and biscuits are all I need to assemble the backrest. That's good and square. The arches are connected with these inch and a half square rungs that have tenons cut on each end that I made using the same methods I showed earlier. And all we need to hold it together is a little bit more of that waterproof glue. Now, this is the tricky bit. Now for the seat support system. There are two elements, this horizontal piece onto which we nail the seat slats and this angle brace. The horizontal piece has been notched at the back to fit around the post and the front edge is a half lap joint to receive the brace. To make the half lap, I've equipped my radial arm saw with my stacked dado head cutter and swung the arm around to 45 degrees. Now I'll just plow it out. This shallow dado will receive a horizontal piece that connects the two sides. The front and back pieces of the seat assembly also have some shallow dados which receive the cross pieces. Everything is assembled using the waterproof glue and some treated screws that won't rust. I've doubled up the two by four on the front of the bench to give it some added support. Well now if I can get a clamp on here, we can start to assemble it. Now let's see if this fits. It's snug, but it's going to make it. The seat slats are made up of one by four redwood and just nailed in place. Now to conceal the joint where the arch meets all the post, I'm just wrapping them with this one by stock with a slightly chamfered edge. Well that's just about it. Now all I have to do is find the right place in the landscape to set up our arbor. Well, what do you think of this as a location for our new arbor? And can you imagine what it might look like this time next summer when we train an ivy to climb up over the top, maybe a little morning glory? It's going to be a great place to come out and read a book.